Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I'm going to try to talk about uh, information about financial education. So I'm not a financial person, but I've learned things along my, my life that I want to try to get other people to understand. So I took a few notes or whatever, and hopefully y'all can follow me on this um, as we're going along. So things that I'm going to be talking about is um, what's the deal with cash, fiat, as some people might call it, information uh, on teens with money and what we can possibly do, assets, liabilities, and what as parents is we can hopefully do to help our kids or if you're a teenager or a person that hopefully gets some information off of this. So right now you can see the Google is on my screen because eventually we're going to end up bringing up and asking some questions so we can see what's going on so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. So <clears throat> on that, if you're new to this channel, my name's Rob and I try to put information out there for people to learn and hopefully get further in life because there's times that I wish there was someone that I looked up to to be able to answer these questions. So, basically in my life, my family and I, we didn't have much money, but I knew I wanted better, just like my parents wanted better. So, this hopefully will get in there. Uh, last few videos were about cryptocurrency. Um, some videos before that were about cars and stuff, so I'm involved in a lot of different things. So, this particular one's going to be about money, and hopefully y'all can get it. So, sorry about the long introduction stuff. Um, if this is something that helps you and benefits you, you get some kind of information out of it, please hit the thumbs up. Um, or if you have any questions or whatever, I can try to answer like I do all my other videos. Um, but I appreciate that. So we're going to get into the, the first thing, um, money. So originally money was like gold, silver. Uh, then you had bar bartering between people like, hey, I had this food. You had that food. Hey, I'll give you this amount of eggs for you know this amount of beef or something like that so that's kind of what we went on to uh moving forward through time basically um now there's something called Brent, Bretton woods in the system i think they met in 1944 um and they basically made fiat money the u.s dollar and stuff like that i think it was five countries got together. As a matter of fact, hold up, here we go. I'll bring this up. So if y'all want to get further into that, y'all can read this and everything. It kind of breaks it down how we had fiat came up with uh, basically being backed by gold. Um, and then which it kept, you know, you could buy a house for let's say four thousand uh, dollars in the fifties and sixties, I think. But matter of fact, let's bring that up. Uh, how much was a home in? Oops. Uh, what is? Nineteen fifty. Oh, so. So look at. That. So that's how much a house would cost back in those times. So as I'm going through, I'm trying to, to get you to understand where I'm kind of coming from. So with that being the case, dollars backed by gold, you this is how much it was because the dollar was valued at something. So in 1971, We were taken off the gold standard. It was only supposed to be for a short time, but they kept it like that because now they can basically manipulate the market um, and they can kind of... So during this time, they had everybody turn in their gold, basically, and it was like $20 or something or 15 or I can't remember exactly. Um, but as soon as the gold was turned in, it automatically went to $35, gold did. So... Now you have them manipulating the system or whatever about 
how this is and that is, and now they're saying your dollars this. Now, if you're getting into this time, uh, if you're watching this now in 2021, you already know that they are printing money like crazy, um, which is going to hyperinflate the dollar. The dollar had already lost for people that didn't know, had lost uh, like 90% of its value. Um, in which in that time frame, they've kept the gold and silver uh, prices down. So it doesn't seem like you realize that money is devaluing over time. So, but you can see it everywhere. Like I started driving, um, I guess about 25 years ago, I remember gas being 90 cent a gallon. Now look at it. You got two, three, four dollars a gallon, some places probably six dollars a gallon. It's not because it it's not because gas is going up because the value of the dollar or the fiat is going down. And that's what I kind of want that's the main thing that people can see at this particular point in doing this whole entire thing. So now we kind of understand where that whole thing is in Bretton Woods and stuff like that. So what I kind of want to break down at this point is, let's say, teenagers, people with money. So we go out and we work for our money. We got bills that we came up with. I did the same thing. It took me a while to understand. They don't teach it in the education system anymore about money, finances, and stuff like that. So I guess a lot of y'all probably don't know because I didn't know at the time either when I was younger that basically during the Bretton Woods um, which hopefully they don't take me down because I'm mentioning that. I want to say that they... Well, okay, I lost train of thought. But they ended up... Um, I want to say they came up with the IRS about that time. So, what this basically did is they acted like the mob kind of thing. They ended up giving you... They had, let's say, this amount of... certain amount of money or whatever... And governments or whatever, let's say the U.S. government goes, hey, I want $1 billion. For every dollar, you got to pay, let's say, 3%. So as soon as you get that $1, you're already in the hole by 3%. So, which is why they need taxes to be paid. The more they borrow, the more they've got to pay taxes. So they're already in a hole. And then you get another dollar to pay taxes. Now you're in, you know, 3% for, for that one as well. So it keeps on compounding kind of thing. So the only people that are really making money are the elites way up there that were in the beginning of this. However, if you look in our government system, you can probably look at a lot of politicians that they stay in there for a long time and that their family members before them are in it and people that are even under their kids and stuff like that, nephews, nieces, whatever, they're also in it. So it seems like it's a big family up there while us, the little people, we're sitting there working our butts off and having to pay for these taxes of them keep on borrowing money. And these wars that we get into that we don't even need to be in in the first place. So anyway, now that you've got that part of it. So kids, so teenagers, um, parents alike, we all go work for to pay our bills because we end up finding out we want this, we want that. Uh, teenagers go, okay, I got a hundred bucks wherever I want to go to get the next tennis shoe or the shirt or pants or whatever. So they want to fit in keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. So what we need to get them to understand is that you don't need to get that kind of stuff um, to, I guess, make it in life. Actually, that makes most of us poor. So as you get older, let's say you're 16, you get your license, you're ready to get a car. Yo, man, I want to get a Lexus. So you go out there and get a Lexus. Um, you spend way too much money, basically, at 16. Why not get a Civic or something like that? Something cheap, you know, good on gas. That gets you point A to point B for right now. And that will end up bringing up to the next thing, what's assets and liabilities. So they used to tell us that homes were an asset because you can end up getting a loan and or a refinance to get some money 
However, I want to sit there and say that, no, it's a liability for us because we got to, to pay for that. And, uh, so that's a liability for us. If you have to pay any kind of bills on it, it's a liability. However, for the banks, the banks, it's an asset because now they end up loaning us the money to buy the house or the car or the credit card to get us the clothes or whatever the case may be. Um, and now they get to get an interest off of us, which means they're getting money. That's an asset. However, we need to spend that around. So we have assets. So let's say you, which the rich do, they buy a house, they rent it out. Now you got your mortgage, you got the person renting the house out. And if you're in the positive after everything's paid for, whatever the case may be on that, you're in the positive as passive income. That is an asset. Let's say you get a car. You buy a car that gets good gas mileage, say a Toyota Prius, for example. You go get a Prius, gets good gas mileage. You find a driver to do Uber for you. You pay this driver. You pay the, the car payment and the insurance, let's say. And you have this guy drive around Uber with your car that's insured after everything's paid for. If you make a profit off of that every month or whatever, every year, then that is an asset. However, with a car, you got the car depreciating, you got gas you got to pay for it, you got insurance to pay for it, you got maintenance to pay for it, all this stuff. You get an accident, you got that stuff to pay for. So a car is a liability. So hopefully I can get y'all to understand what the difference is on, on an asset and a liability. So you basically want to invest in things that are going to make you money. Like if you buy a house, why not have an in-law suite like in your basement and you rent it out? So now your mortgage is, let's say, $1,500 a month and you can rent that apartment out for, let's say, $1,700 a month, then it's passive income or you're living for free. Or maybe you can only rent it out for $1,000 a month and your mortgage is $1,500 a month. That means you're only paying $500 a month. Now, it's still a liability. However, they're helping you pay that so you can free up a thousand dollars a month or whatever it may be and put it into another asset. <sighs> okay. So now that you kind of hopefully understand what that is, there's other assets as well. Like, um, if you want to invest in another business, like one of your family members or friends or whatever, or just another person, you want to find investment to go into for business. Someone comes up to, Hey, I got this great business idea. They got a proposal. They got it written out. You look at it. It sounds great. Um, you, they're needing, let's say $2,000 and you get a percentage of whatever that ends up being. So you could use that as an investment and you're getting a dividend. I guess you want to say off of that business, kind of the same thing with stocks. If you buy, let's say Ford, um, Ford pays you dividends for buying their stock. However, Every quarter, you get a little bit of money um, for however many stock you have, and you also get a, the price of the stock if it goes up or, in some cases, go down. Um, and that would be another one, dividend stocks. Uh, then you have crypto that's coming up. You have certain uh, crypto that you can buy that actually gives you a dividend. Um, however, instead of U.S. dollar, they give it to you in that coin. And that coin actually goes up and down in value, but you still get that percentage. Whew, I know that's a lot of information. Hopefully, y'all are keeping up with me and everything. So that's what assets and liabilities are going to end up being and what you can kind of like get into for that. So as in parents, I mean, what can we do to help our kids, ourselves to get out of the poverty that we've been in generations. Um, and that is tough because now you have kids with low uh, ability to pay attention um, and they don't really want to go out. They have their phones, their tablets, whatever. They don't want to concentrate. They don't want to pay attention to anything that you talk about. Hopefully there's something that you can find that they appreciate that is something good for them um 
that you can kind of work this into. Some some kids are about money. They want to get some money for, let's say, going out with their friends or something. So I was coming up with something earlier today that I figured I'd kind of share with y'all. Now, I haven't put this into work yet. I'm interested in finding out how it works, though. Um, for people that don't know, I have a 14-year-old that's here. I also have a 6- and a 3-year-old. Uh, but I wanted to try this out. So I've got the first thing is like, if you want to make $5, if you can come up with a list of things that you want to make money at, that you think you'd be good. Like, uh, what do you want to do later in life? Uh, and what, what kind of, what kind of image do you want? Like, do you want a big house, a small house, an off grid house? Do you want you know, a truck, a car, um, whatever, just try to pick their mind to see what they're doing, but have them think about it like a list of what they are wanting to do as a job, a career, a, a business owner, whatever, and, um, uh, kind of get them to write certain things down. And then at that point they do that, you give them $5, let's say. So we move on to the next list. So let's say you, if out of those things, um, how can or will you make money on each one of those? And you can kind of give a list. Like if you were going to start a business, how would you get for each one of those that you listed? What would you end up putting together to try to make that a reality? And then when they get that, you can give them $20. Um, then I have, um, if you read and listen to learn more on one or more that are on your list of what you want to do later in life, um, as pushing kind of goals kind of thing towards them, um, give a list of details on how you would make it into a business. So yes, it's kind of coming out of our pocket, but I'm trying to take it a step at a time to make it easier for them to understand how all this kind of works together. So then maybe throw one more thing up there, uh, give them like a hundred dollars up front, another hundred dollars or whatever, um, to start a business. And if they make the business or whatever, and it makes $500, you give them $400 more. So you'll match it basically a hundred dollars to start it. You give them $400 if they make the business and then it would end up working out that way. And then, uh, or like maybe a bonus or whatever, you can give them uh, $200 if they, out of the profits that they made from their um, business, which, and the money that you gave them, so it'd be $1,000 at that point, you take 10% of that, and you take it, which is 100 bucks, and you put it into uh, passive income. Um, like uh, like I just finished mentioning before, like another business someone start, started talking about, or you can put into um, dividend stocks somewhere or dividend cryptos, uh, which that would be another thing is because I really think that a lot of us are going to the digital dollar kind of thing um, to go into crypto. So I would have another 10% go into uh, crypto of some sort, which really you need to kind of get in there and learn it yourself and look at the white pages on certain cryptos because not all of them are legit kind of companies and stuff, but there are ways to find the information out. So basically you get, get another $200 when you do that. So basically they would spend $200 of their money that they just got off the business and put that into there so they can kind of understand how the, the cycle goes. So, uh, which that brings me into this part right here, which if it'll load, hopefully it will. Um, so you've got articles all over the place with this, and many people know it. Don't worry about that right there. But you've got people on here that 14, 15, 16, 18 years old that's made a million dollars or more on these um, and giving them ideas on certain things. I mean, it, these are the things that I'm trying to get people to see. It's like you can... You can make money one way or another, but you also need to know how to invest and how would you work on it. Try to stay out of uh, finance, financial trouble. So you want to go and get them to understand how that works. So 
hopefully y'all get an understanding of what I'm trying to educate y'all on and how I'm looking at things. But hopefully y'all got something out of this. Please uh, subscribe, like, um, leave a comment if you would like. Hopefully this helped a lot of people out. And we will see y'all on the next one. I appreciate it.